lordy. Okay guys, we got us a nice chilly day in the bluegrass. It's about 15 degrees out here. I know I've been a little bit remiss in putting these videos up. I've just been super busy. But uh, the last time you saw this little puppy here, I was introducing a leash to him. Now it was a little while ago. But, you know, people emailed me and asked me what kind of leash I use. And I just use these, uh, uh, they just call it English show leashes is what I've always called them, you know. Now, so this puppy's up here and he's pretty patient. But he's hit, uh, you know, he's starting to hit this little bit, a little bit of a boundary testing phase. And so people say, well, Stoney, how do you control him, you know, when he starts to pull in on the leash or, 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 you know, you're walking him and he gets after the squirrels or the other dogs or whatever. Do you use a pinch collar, an electric collar? You know, all those tools are fine and they have their place, but to be honest with you, you know, what I do is I just use this. So, uh, you know, I put a little pee in it, perfect puppy. I put it around the dog's head and I make this loop kind of big here. Oh, let me see. And then I'm going to make a halter out of it, basically. So I'm going to take and I'm going to just twist this around. Watch. Here's my loop. I'm going to twist this around so it goes over his nose. And then I'm going to cinch this part of it up. Bring this up high at the base of his skull. Now, if this little fella, you know, if he goes to pulling, I've got a little bit better control over his head. And you don't have to really jerk or pull on it too much because already you've done your work. You know, you spend a lot of time with them when they were a puppy. And by now they should understand that, you know, the leash, any kind of pressure on the leash going with it, compliance with that pressure is going to lead to something good. But... You know, they'll hit these little phases where, especially a dog bred to be a hunting dog or, you know, a high drive animal in general, they'll see something, they'll want to chase it. And sometimes, you know, this little piece of food, it just doesn't, it just not, it's just not enough. Just, let's just be honest, right? So on a motivational scale, let's say, you know, that piece of food, that's a five or six and petting them and loving on them is a five or six. And this ball that I have in my pocket, that's a seven or an eight for this particular dog. Well, you know, if a squirrel runs by, if a deer back here in my backfield is, 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 we jump him up out of the brush, you know, that's a 10. If, if one of these horses on my neighbor's farm gets to going, you know, that's a 10. So unless I have a horse in my pocket, I'm going to lose that battle, okay? I don't have anything positive enough to control the puppy. So what I do is I take and I put this uh, leash on him like this. So now I have a control of his whole, you know, at the base of his skull and over his muzzle. So if he tries to pull, I just have too much of a leverage advantage on him and he can't. So basically what I'm doing is I'm taking that option away, that option to move away from me or fight my authority away. And it's really neat because I don't have to have a whole bunch of different pieces of equipment to work these whole bunch of dogs that I have out here. Just this one little English show lead and I can go from dog to dog to dog. Just remember, it's a P for a perfect puppy over the head, make your little loop, cinch it up at the base of his skull, oh, and now you've got him, you know. All right, now I'll show you this in action for a second. <clears throat> All right, so uh, starting from a sit position, let's negotiate an obstacle, and we're gonna use our little halter leash. Come on, buddy. Talk to him, be real easy. See a little pressure on the head here to slow him down. Good boy. Sometimes these young puppies get a little too excited. Good boy. So let's go back. Watch how I turn. Look at, notice the slack in this leash as I walk away. You can see how easy the dog walks. If you do your homework when they're babies, it just takes so little compulsion, guys. You know, all these arguments on the internet about this tool or that tool or the other tool, really those are arguments mainly made by people that aren't doing the right amount of work in the beginning stages of their training program you know that 8 to 16 16 to 24 week phase so watch this little guy come on buddy i'm just going to talk to him okay easy easy good boy might have to put a little pressure but not much i turn around if i want to go fast come on buddy go 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 good boy now watch i'm gonna come up here and i'm gonna have him sit so i'm gonna sit my voice changes a little bit a little bit of pressure with this leash but not much good let's go Good. I want him to be careful on these slippery barrels because it's so cold. Good. Sit. Need him to sit. I got some goats coming over here. Look at these goats getting in the camera. This is what I'm talking about. Sometimes you need just a little bit of help. And turning your show lead into a, a, a halter can, can do, that's about all you need, really. If you've done your work up front and you have a nice dog, that's about all you need. Good boy. 
<clears throat> Sit. Okay, so here we are. The sun's coming out. I think it's got up to about 16 degrees now. I'm going to use these two obstacles and a goat to show you how all this stuff uh, factors together. Okay, so the halter gives me the ability to keep the dog's attention even though he might rather, you know, chase this goat or if I drop a piece of food on the ground for the goat. I'm going to love on him and tell him I'm proud of him and give him some food if he does his obstacles right. So I use my leash and collar, okay, in this case it's improvised halter, to maintain control of the dog so that he ends up doing something. And there goes a helicopter right there, a helicopter flying the power lines about 175 feet off the ground, right? You know, that's the kind of thing that just pops up every so often. And when it pops up, you need to be able to physically control your dog. During that period of your dog's life where they're boundary testing, sometimes that's just tough. But this improvised halter or a choke chain or a halty or an electric collar, whatever your tool of choice is, you know, they just sometimes they're necessary, okay? And what they're for really is to keep your dog from making a mistake so that you can keep him on the right road. And while he's on the right road, you can, you know, keep taking him out and letting him have a good time and rewarding him and, and making sure his life is all in all enjoyable. Now I'm going to go back to working him. Come on, buddy. Hup. Come on, buddy. Hup. Oh, good boy. I can come through this tire. Oh, come on, buddy. Good boy. He's a fine animal. Talk to him like I'm really excited. Come on, hup. Oh, good boy. Come on, hup. Now, see, this coat's over here doing some stuff. Good dog. But this dog's not even paying attention to him, you know. And if he were to pay attention to him, like, watch, I could just pull up on his little halter, and there he has to sit down. Now, listen, guys, you know, all these different kinds of pieces of equipment people argue about, like I told you before, it, it's, it's just really a matter of personal choice but at the same time if you have to use if you have to rely on a piece of equipment much then probably what you need to do is you need to back up if you see somebody out there with their pinch collar and they're jerking the dog or the choke chain they're jerking them or, or their electric collar and they keep having to shock them a bunch or their gentle leader and they got the dog's neck all bowed up that person needs to back up and address how much exercise is my dog getting? You know, how much of a motivational base do I have on my dog? Am I doing a good job of communicating effectively what's expected out of this, you know, out of our relationship, okay? But that right there, what you just saw, this is how I do it. And I find that this is a real easy way, and I hope you have good luck with it because it's so simple, you don't even have to have hardly any pieces of equipment. All right, so I'll see you all next week.